Welcome back to Universio. Today, the curvature of space. On March 7, 1947, a group of soldiers and scientists in the New Mexico desert launched a missile carrying a motion picture camera, which took the first panorama shots of Earth from outer space. On December 21, 1968, astronaut William Anders took the first full disk image of Earth from space. Both images told us Earth is a sphere rather than a flat disk. According to general relativity, we actually live in a four-dimensional universe. Three-dimensional space plus one-dimensional time known as space-time. Are we able to perceive a high-dimensional world from a low-dimensional perspective? Today, we're going to answer this question and unveil the true nature of curvature in our universe. Apparently, it's pretty impossible to see the curvature of Earth from the ground. Assume Earth is a perfect sphere with a radius equal to 6,371 kilometers. If we evenly divide it into 360 pieces, then each piece acquires one degree, with the arc length equal to 111 kilometers. The tiny triangle represents Mount Everest, which is the highest point on Earth. Even if we stand on top of Mount Everest, curvature of the horizon is still too small to be perceived by our eyes. However, 2,500 years ago, Greek philosophers had already proposed a spherical Earth without the help of missiles or spacecraft. Aristotle was the first philosopher to propose a spherical Earth based on actual physical evidence. He listed several arguments for a spherical Earth. Ships disappear whole first when they sail over the horizon, and Earth casts a round shadow on the moon during a lunar eclipse. Later on, more and more evidence was found by humans. The most famous one is the Aerotothesis experiment. If Earth is flat, two identical sticks at different latitudes should have the same shadow length. However, the experiment result shows us we get different shadow lengths at different latitudes, which indicates Earth is round. From a geometry perspective, there are two ways to represent Earth, globe and map. The one on the left is the so-called high-dimensional viewpoint. It reflects what can be observed if we are standing outside of Earth, which is also known as the external point of view. But what happens if we are creatures that live in a 2D world? Then we can only perceive the 2D projection of Earth on the right side, known as the low-dimensional viewpoint or intrinsic point of view. In this situation, space becomes a 2D surface, but it can still be curved. In the 2D world, all objects, including light, are all traveling on the surface. There's no reference, such as sticks, that can help us identify the curvature of space, because every object is flat, and all 3D methods are no longer applicable. Then, here comes the question. How can 2D creatures perceive the curvature of space from the intrinsic point of view? Here's the approach. Assume we have two maps, United States and New York City. On the US map, one centimeter represents 100 kilometers in the real world, while on the New York City map, one centimeter actually corresponds to 250 meters, known as scale. It's the fundamental tool that helps us perceive the curvature of space from the intrinsic point of view. Imagine there was a person traveling from A to B. On the map, her position moved 4 centimeters on the x-axis and 3 centimeters on the y-axis. According to Pythagorean theorem, the person traveled 5 centimeters in total. If the scale is 1 to 10,000 in both vertical and horizontal directions, then the actual traveling distance in the real world is 50,000 centimeters or 500 meters. If we replace the square of scale with a letter G, then it can have a new name, metric tensor. For a 2D space, its metric tensor is a two by two matrix. However, the topography of the terrain is not always flat. And realistically, the person's climbing path is not necessarily a straight line. We need to divide the path until the length of each segment is approaching zero. It gives us an infinite amount of tiny line segments, and each segment is encapsulated by a 3D cube, which is so tiny that we can treat them as flat Euclidean space. It means for a particular cube, the metric tensor is constant everywhere. That is to say, three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem can be applied to calculate the length of those line segments. We call the space on the left side high-dimensional flat space because we can infinitely subdivide the space and eventually be able to apply the 3D Pythagorean theorem in a flat Euclidean space that has constant metric tensor everywhere. However, the situation completely changes on the right side. For a curved 2D space, its metric tensor is distinct everywhere. You can see there's a variable in the metric tensor. 
It means if we choose a tiny area on the 2D surface, its vertical scale is always 1, but its horizontal scale is changing along the Y coordinate. For example, if we select a small area on the equator, say its coordinate is 0, 0, then both vertical and horizontal scales are equal to 1. However, what happens if the observer moves towards the North Pole? Now the horizontal scale starts to change. It reduces to 0.7 when Y is equal to 45 degrees. When Y is equal to 60 degrees, the horizontal scale becomes 0.5. In the end, when the observer reaches the North Pole, the horizontal scale is 0. That means length is meaningless at the top and bottom edges of the map. No matter how far you travel on those two edges, you always stay at the starting point. If we subdivide the map into multiple patches and apply corresponding transformations to each of them, the map will look like this. Let's go back to the high-dimensional 3D world. The person is moving at a constant speed along a great circle. If we expand the sphere, then her path projected on a 2D surface would look like this. From the intrinsic point of view, we would find the person is moving faster in the north and south poles, but slower near the equator. This is because the horizontal length of the 2D space is getting shorter and shorter when we move toward north or south. Super easy to understand with our prior explanations. But if we are all two-dimensional creatures and always think our universe is completely flat, how can we explain this phenomenon without the help of Einstein or Riemann? I believe different people will have different answers, and please leave yours in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you like my video, please subscribe to this channel.